Okay, this, oper or this video is on uh, arithmetic operations on functions. Um, I am using this example number 36, uh, no, not an example, it's a problem number 36 from your text. Uh, so you can look in your text if you want. I've just rewritten the data tables up here. So let's start um, with the first part. And the problem says find f plus g of x. And let's first talk about what this means. So this really means, because there's an f plus g and then x, it really means the function f of x plus the function g of x. Okay, so we're adding those together. So in this particular example, we want to find f plus g at the value negative 1. So this really means I evaluate the function f of x at negative 1, and I evaluate the function g of x at negative 1, and then I add them together. So when I look at the table up here, when x is negative 1, f of x is 4. And then when I look at the table on the right, when x is negative 1, g of x is 2. And when I add these together, I get 6. Pretty basic. Let's do the next one which is subtraction. So we've got f minus g of x. And I can split this apart. This really means f of x minus g of x. So for this particular example, I want uh, f minus g at 0. So this means I evaluate f at 0. And then I subtract the evaluation of g at 0. So when I put 0 into f, it looks like I get out 1. When I put 0 into g of x, I get out 0. And 1 minus 0 is 1. Let's do multiplication next. This looks like f times g of x. I can split this apart and say this is f of x times g of x. So in this particular example, I want to evaluate f times g at 2. So this really means the f of 2 and then multiplied by g of 2. So when I put 2 into f of x up here in the table, 3 comes out. And when I put 2 into g of x up here in the table, 1 comes out. 3 times 1 is 3. And you can probably guess that the last one is division. Let's see if we can squeeze that one in right here, division. So that looks like f divided by g of x. And of course, I could split this apart. I could say this is f of x divided by g of x. So let's evaluate this one at 2. So I have f divided by g at 2. That means I have f at 2 divided by g at 2. Well, when I put 2 into f of x, out comes 3. When I put 2 into g, <coughs> 2 into g, out comes 1. And 3 divided by 1 is 3. And that's the end of this lesson.